All right, so we're going to review simplifying fractional terms. This was section 1.6 in the Composition of Math textbook. And um, I just want to get down to simplifying a fractional term. So to simplify a fractional term, we're going to identify all fractional factors in the term. Um, any division, change all division. So any division that we have, we're going to change to the reciprocal factor. So again, we invert and multiply. The next thing we do is cancel all fractional factors of 1. What we're doing is basically choosing to multiply the fractional factors of 1 first. And then when we're done with those, just multiply the rest of the factors together. So I'm just going to go through this kind of slowly. Um, but let's simplify the following fractional terms. Um, so if we have negative 3 times 2 fifths. This is one term. There's no plus or minus. So the factors in the term we recognize as negative 3 over 1. So this has, in a numerator, this has factors of negative 3 and 2 and in the denominator of 5. So it basically teaches us to see the factors in the numerator and the denominator. There are no fractional factors of 1 to cancel. So 2 over 5 and 3 over 5. So now we're just left with multiplying. Um, the top becomes negative 6. The bottom is 5. Or we could run the negative in front as negative 6 fifths. So the next problem, again, is just recognizing the factors. Now, any negative sign in front of a fra fraction basically in is like a factor of negative 1. So if I multiply those together, that's just positive 1. So 5 in the numerator times, and then over here we have 5 in the denominator. So if we look at this as separate factors, we have negative 1 times a 5, and then negative 1 times an 8 in the numerators. In the denominators, we have an 8 and a 5. So again, the denominator is that fractional factor. But here, we can cancel fractional factors of 1. So 5 over 5 is just 1. 8 over 8 is just 1. So the only factors we have are negative 1 times 1 times negative 1 times 1. So the answer to this is positive 1. So everything got canceled in that case. Now, if we have division, um, if we have a problem where there's division, um, again, this signifies a factor. So we want to take the reciprocal. It's basically like a factor operator. So we have 2 thirds, and then multiply times the reciprocal. So now we can cancel. And in this case, there's actually nothing to cancel, the 3s and the 2 and the 7. So we're left with just multiplying on top, which is 14, and on the bottom, which is 9. Now, I'm not worried about writing my fractions as mixed numbers. Um, I just want to get rid of any fractional factors of 1. So again, when they see an expression, um, the division, whatever I'm dividing by, is a separate factor. So this. Um, expression has a factor of 7. This factor of 5, but now because of the division in the denominator, I have a factor of 10. So instead of having to take 7 divided by 10, now I can look at all these factors. And notice I can cancel the 5 and the 10, leaving a factor of 2 in the denominator. So I would end up with 7 on top over 2. All right, so let's practice this a little more. Um, again, just understanding we can look at fractional factors. And the key is that this is supposed to be a key. But it's to cancel all fractional factors of 1, keeping track of factors that are left. Now, when we have just a single fraction that we want to simplify, um, the idea is that we see the individual factors. 
of each of these numbers. So um, what we could do is just look at the prime factors of the numbers um, and kind of get an idea. Well, 42 is 6 times 7. 6 is 2 times 3. So 42 is factors of 2 times 3 times 7. Um, 63 is actually um, 9 times 7, and 9 is 3 times 3, so 63 is 3 times 3 times 7. So now that we have the individual factors, now we can see the ones that are common. We can cancel fractional factors of 1, so 3 over 3 is gone. And 7 over 7 is also gone, our factor of 1. So all I have left is 2 over 3. Now, a lot of times people will look at this 42 over 63 and come up with a number that divides both. And they'll say, take the number and divide top and bottom by 21. So first of all, we have to be able to see that 21 is a common factor. Well, when you look at the factors that we canceled, the 3 and the 7, that was the 21. Now, when you divide by 21, you're basically canceling those factors from 42. So that's why we divide top and bottom by 21, and we get 2 over 3. So division, what I'm talking about, division is the same thing as canceling fractional factors. But then we need to keep track of factors that are left. So what's important is the 2 and the 3 that's left. So when we look at problems down here, I'm going to do the division, um, basically canceling the factors and keeping track of factors that are left. So um, 5 and 25. So we have a factor in the numerator and one in the denominator. The 5 will cancel with a factor of 5 in this denominator and it's going to leave a factor of 5 in the denominator. So 5 times 5, right? 12 and 24. Well, 12 goes into 24 evenly, and that's going to leave a factor of 2. So I'm basically doing the division, but I'm showing the canceling and the factors that are left. So this would be equal to 2 fifths. So we have to be careful that we don't just start canceling right away. If we have a division or a divided factor, we need to take the reciprocal. Whoop. Okay, sorry about that. Um, So we need to take the reciprocal before we cancel. So the reciprocal flips these factors. Um, so I end up with 15 over 24 times 10 or 16 over 10. Now the factors are in their correct spot. So now we can start canceling. So there's a 5 between 15 and 10. So if I divide out by the 5, I'm left with a 3 and a 2. So a 3 on top and a 2. 16 and 24, we can divide out an 8, or factor or cancel out an 8. What's left on top here, if I divide out by 8, is a 2. And on the bottom is a 3. So now we have our factors on top, a 3 and a 2, and the bottom 3 and 2. Well, we can still cancel 3 over 3, that's 1. And we can cancel 2 over 2, that's 1. So this is actually equal to just 1. Um, so again, we just have to be careful that we switch all of our divisions to reciprocal factors before we start canceling. All right, let's look at 3. This looks terrible, especially if I don't have a calculator. But we have all these factors. Um, the factor of 75 is like 75 over 1. So that's in the numerator. Well, instead of trying to multiply all the numbers on top, we're going to multiply, we're going to combine the fractional factors of 1 first. So like I noticed the 17 in the denominator and the 34 in the numerator. 
So 17 goes into 34. I can cancel a factor of 17, and it leaves a factor of 2 in the numerator. 33 and 11, the 11 can cancel with 33, leaving a factor of 3 in the numerator. And the only other factor in the denominator is 25. So 25 actually can cancel with 75. 25 cancel with 75, leaving a factor of 3. So what's left here are just factors in the numerator. I have 3 times 3 times 2 times 2, and that's all over 1. Um, but this would be equal to, if I multiply that out, 36. So you might end up canceling like all the factors in the denominator, but what's nice is I'm basically choosing to, to put the factors together in the order I want. Um, all right, again, for 4, the last problem here. Um, recognizing the factors, here I have division, and then here I have division. So we have a, a negative 1 factor. 3 fifths would be a factor of 3 in the numerator, and in the denominator, a factor of 5. Divided by 15, so this 15 needs to move into the denominator. And then divided by, well, negative 1 is a factor of negative 1. And then we're going to flip 25 to the numerator and 6 to the denominator. So these are all the factors I have. And now, once I have all the factors, I can just start multiplying them in any order. Negative 1 times negative 1 is just 1. Let's see, 5 goes into 25 with a factor of 5 left. Okay, 3 goes into 15. 3 to 15 leaves a factor of 5 in the denominator. So what I have left is a 5 on top, and I have a 5 and a 6 in the denominator. So well, we can cancel these 5s, and finally my answer would be 1 over 6. So again, we're, we're looking for fractional factors of 1 to cancel. If we can just keep track of the factors that are left, it makes multiplying fractions actually really nice because we get to cancel or divide off the common factors first.